Sorry. Uh, and make sure you, you sub, sub, subscribe, S-U-B-S-C-R-I-B-E, to Accelerate TV. It's the only place you can accelerate, like. <laughs> <laughs>we always like to go in without the backstory. So the, the way we're starting this conversation is on our other show, on our other Accelerate TV show called Brotherhood, the music episode that has Nito C, Bez, Ayo Anima Shao, Baba Keke, DJ Obi. Mm -hmm. No, no, F.A. or Morrigan. F.A., yeah. And DJ Obi. BJ Obi was And DJ Obi, yes, he was the... Yeah. So remember vividly that Nito C was talking about you and when he met you in Yankee. Okay. And let me quote, he said that ah, I met Ike Chiku and you could tell that Ike Chiku and Uzi were seasoned veterans and Nikki Chiku used to just rap and he would move the shit and, <laughs> and just like, rap rah, rah. and just rap <laughs> and he was so fascinated. So we were not there but we could see it. What we want now of course is the story of all of that. How odd even before Ike Chiku before Nito see. Oh wow. Okay. Take so, it back if you like. Just take it back. Okay so let me do a quick summary. Prior to going to Yankee, going back to Yankee for college in night while I was still in Nigeria, I used to break dance, I used to write raps. My sisters, my older sisters all lived in Yankee, were going to school. And one sister in particular, Uru, she would like always come back with vinyl, right? And yeah. it would be hip hop records and they'd have a B side. You know what B side is yeah. now. So instrumentals, yapa, right? So I would always force myself to learn the lyrics of the song itself and then flip it to the B-side and perform it to myself. That's what I used to do. And then I started writing my own raps and to those beats and stuff like that at a very early age. And, um, but then it was just like for fun, you know? It wasn't no like, ah, I'm gonna make a career out of this, I'm gonna be a rapper, no. It was just like, I love hip hop. But then um, fast forward, I got to the States. I spent um, one semester in Ohio, at the University of Akron. While I was out there, it kind of took a hold of me because the, the few friends that I had were also creatives at the time. And one was a singer who could sing better than Luther Vandross, you know, and the other one was a rapper. And we would do like, we would go to like these little events that schools used to have, like open mics and then people would be rapping, but yeah, I used to lean back until one day that we had chilled, yeah, and we had smoked and I was in my element, like I was just feeling myself. And my guy Mike was like, yo, EK, come on, man. You not gonna get on the mic? I was like, who said I'm not gonna get on the mic? It's <laughs> 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 like it was beef. And I got on the mic and they had to drag me off the mic. Like, oh man, he's killing it, but yo, your time, yo, your, yo, bro, your time, your time. Yeah, so that was kind of like the beginning of me saying to myself, ah, I can do it. this is what I want to do. You know, and from then on, it was like, I changed my major. I went into uh, intro into theater, you know, and... Um, Did you get flack from that, from your parents? Um, on the dodging of my parents, eh, I was the best at it. In fact, eh, because of how much I dodged my parents from 1992 till about 1996, yeah. My popsy was constantly complaining about me not communicating to the point where he started to write letters. <laughs> For real. He started write letters. Sometimes you post it, sometimes you give it to people. That They're money. coming. Yeah. And um, it wasn't until a few years, it wasn't until I came back and spent a few years here that we now had some kind of a, you know, grown relationship. But back to, back to the story. In Jersey, I now started meeting, I, I moved from Ohio back to Jersey to live with my sister and her husband, and um, I started associating with, I started meeting people who were like just into music, you know? And that's where I formulated, you know, my whole feeling, my whole conviction of this is it, this is what I'm doing. You know, so I could, can I curse yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and then, yeah, I met Carlos, Carlos Hassan and his brother Kareem Hassan. Um, Carlos had a record label, like an, like an independent, his own label. He had a few artists. Um, he was doing stuff with Diddy, you know, like, as far as like production, because Carlos did production, he still does production. And um, 
you know, it, it just kind of grew from there. We used to sell Sandman mixtapes. There was this DJ that was under Carlos's label called DJ Sandman. He's he manages he's a manager for Yellow Beezy now and stuff like that. That's another artist, and um, it just grew, bro. It just grew, and I started learning how to make beats, and then I moved to New York. And once I moved to New York. It became a whole different other beast. I was like, I realized that my Jersey exposure to hip hop wasn't complete at all. It was deficient, you know, like it was pretty much like yeah. anemic, you get me? So I went through a whole different like re-education or miseducation. And I started taking battles, yo, because I lived in every borough in New York. There are five boroughs, Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, Staten Island. I've lived in all of them. And at some point, I battled m multiple times in, in all bars. Yeah. But I settled in Harlem, though. And um, through that period, besides the battles, I also used to do like open mics, New Yorkian, Poets Cafe, Kilimanjaro. Uh, those are just ones I can remember off the top of my head. And um, all this was just grooming me, you know, it was just grooming me, grooming me. And um, I stopped working in offices at one point because I worked at. You know, I've worked at several different type of firms, you know, corporate America, like law firms, uh, trade, stock and trading firms, whatever. I've done accounts receivable, payable, I've done paralegal assistant, I've done Wall Street, you know, Series 6 IPO maintenance. Oh, you, don't, you understand? Yeah, I mean, get so, it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, I stopped doing those type of jobs because as much as they were paying all right and all that, they didn't give me enough time to do what I wanted to do. So I switched into food and hospitality, started waitering on tables, bartending, you know, even managing or assistant managing restaurants and stuff like that. And um, that allowed me to spend more time at home, make beats, work on music, go to studio, book studio time, do late night studio, da da da, and still be making good money, you know. And then enters Uzi and Nito. Uzi finally comes, this is like 99, Uzi comes to Yankee, finally. and. Um, he gets into uh, State of University, New York, SUNY, uh, Old Westbury, and NATO is there too. So I guess that's how they met. And uh, Uzi would now come initially and visit. I think he came like maybe, actually he only came like maybe once or without NATO to visit from upstate because yeah. I was in New York, you know. And I had my clan of boys that I called the Academy. Are you getting oh, to me? Yeah. D A. And then AKA yeah, 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 yeah. And the only reason why we called the crib the academy was because number one, well, it was five of us living in a two bedroom apartment. <laughs> okay. Gangster. Anybody that came to visit knew that you can't say hello, hi after you walk in the door without doing a certain amount of push ups, picking up the dumbbell and the barbell. Yeah, so it's, you get that into that fitness thing from Yeah, time. man. And then it wasn't only that. We used to test each other. Like this guy, you cannot chop three blows. You can't. <laughs> and if you, he said it's just like, because everybody has taken that as, okay, he says that he can't can can chop, chop three blows. blows. So now you must flex and collect the three blows. You understand? And that's, we just used to test each other like that. Not just physically, but also intellectually. Yeah. So you get, it's like, you could not come inside and yarn dust. It doesn't matter whether it was biology, chemistry, physics, life in general. Yeah. You can't just come and yarn dust. So you guys will check you immediately. So that's why we dubbed the place. Yeah, okay. Okay. Exactly. And then Uzi, Uzi came down one time. I had set up in, there were two rooms, right? One was Eugene Spiropoulos' room and one was uh, Chris Keith's room. Chris and Eugene were friends, right? Eugene was the, was the, the conduit for uh, Andy, who was also his brother. Yeah. And then... Bobby, who's also his brother, and then David, who's his cousin, first cousins, the, yeah. mothers, are, the mothers are sisters. And then also kind of like the, sec the sub conduit for me, because Andy, his brother, was like one of my best friends from like we we're classmates and all that. Now, I had set up kind of like a studio setup in Chris's room because Chris originally had a DJing setup. Because Chris, white boy Chris. DJ. 
he did that to the next level where the guy not just he didn't just want to dj but he now went and got a sampler like a, a rolling all those MP, yeah, all those, yeah. so he'd be doing all these songs all those pressing things and yeah yeah, yeah yeah so i was like yo man you're gonna have to show me how to work that sampler because i'm trying to make beats i'm sick of chasing these guys with beats he taught me how to use a sampler hooked it up to his old macintosh 8400 or something like that start making beats uzi now comes down with nato tells me that this is his boy Teaching him how to rap, and you know, da, 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 da. so me, I'm like, your teachers on you. Let me finish your teaching song. Come, let me teach you people how to rap. I tell you, yeah. rolling book. Come on, will you smoke? Smoke up. Oh, you know they smoke. Oh, you know they smoke. I smoke, man. I smoke. <laughs> and I was just, I was just like, they would watch me going over my stuff, and then I'll put on a beat, like just watching them and noticing that they're just being. Oh yeah, now let's rap. Let's rap. Nah, you gotta be able to rap, yo. Come on, yo. Freestyle. Just let it come. Just let just let it come. That was another thing that I hate about coming back to Nigeria. Most of the rappers say, I don't freestyle. When I when grew yeah, up freestyle is part. I mean you grew up in New York, so you like you Bros, pause. I grew up in Lagos. Yeah, I mean, but, you, but, yeah but you had that New York I went to you had that New York. So when was there. I agree with you. But it, whether it's Lagos or New York, I'm just like, how can you well, say you, went to Casey. you don't freestyle? I mean, Casey was yeah. before. Casey and before called, Casey, yeah. I went to FGC Portacourt. I transferred from Portacourt to Casey. Sure you get it. I know in Casey, freestyling was a thing. Bruh, as in, with a skip class, they behind library, they freestyle. You must go from Casey, Casey. to yes, New York. Now. Yeah, I mean, Casey boy to Florence. Yeah, but I, I know you said Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, Florence. But are you extension or are you original? Main camp you annex. Okay, okay. Main camp so, annex. So you went from main camp. Yeah, but main camp annex. Uh -huh. So yeah. library yeah. or main camp behind. Yeah. Was it was known for? Yeah, the staircases place like this. Freestyle battles and fights. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> 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 no. But yeah, that's how NATO. That's how NATO and Nuzi came. You know, and um, kind of started building on that. Even at one point, they both kind of like left New York and went to the DC Maryland area. And they would still come up and visit, you know. I mean, once you get that New York in your blood, it's hard to get it out. It is, man. Yeah, so. And then at some point, Nato had started telling me, I think this this might have been like maybe like 03. And I had barely, like 20, 2002, I started leaving America. Like, I stopped working jobs for people. I was like, I'm no more working for the man, you know. If it's not indirectly or directly working for your me. I'm not doing it. So I started managing my girlfriend at the time who was like a top model from Slovakia and um, started bouncing around Europe, right? So every time I'd come in, it would be like, my cousin back in Nigeria heard our mixtape with the guy is loving it too. He's loving it too. I'm like, oh, Nigeria. Like, I'm about trying to push out the MC Universal, you're talking about Nigeria. Because <laughs> uh, I actually had a situation with MC yeah. Universal, you know? So, but it never panned out. So, I guess it was, it was um, 2000 and f 2004, I think it was 2004 when I came back to Yankee on a break and I saw Two-Face on my TV, on MTV2, one, channel 128, I'll never forget this. And he was wearing black on black, bald hair, had a little goatee, and I just saw someone that looked almost exactly like me. Like you. Yeah. So there's a presentation. he was playing on MTV on their new um slot called international superstars and i was just like <laughs> oh, <give it> there. <laughs> <laughs> so america mtv is now playing nigerian stores and they are re re recognizing them and repping yeah them. i was like eh. okay how far are your cousin and the mixtape now <laughs> oh, Nato. how far are your cousin and that mixtape <laughs> You know, and um, funny as this may seem, I went back to Nigeria that year. That was the first time I came back to Nigeria since 92, Christmas of 20, 2004, right? Came back to Nigeria, I spent 10 days here. Out of the 10 days, seven of the days I spent in the village with my father. Because he wasn't in Lagos when I came. Okay. Yeah. So I had to go to the village, sat with him, and I had not graduated university. Let's oh. remember that. My father is a double major graduate from Howard University. Damn. So you get computer science, electronical. <laughs> Can't imagine. Left America, came back to Nigeria to come and fight Biafra, then went back. 
Jiget, this man is not the kind that you tell. I'm not doing school I, again. Or that I haven't graduated. Yeah. So I came back and I gave him the gist. I was like, look, man, I didn't finish school because I felt like this is what I want to do. And I knew the kind of man that you are. And if I presented it to you, you would laugh at me, which would like throw me off. Yeah. That's why I've been away from you, keeping my distance. I had real man, man talk for about like maybe three hours, you know? And then he was just, his face was just like this. <laughs> and when I finished talking, I said, where's the music? I said, in Igbo or in English? <laughs> in English, he said, where's the music? I picked up my disc man, Sony disc man. Yeah, true. Yeah, had those wire here. Yeah. Put it on the camera, listen to it. So, yeah, and you know how when you don't want someone to know that you're yeah. feeling it? So, I saw him, I noticed twitching, but he was, he was still masking it well. And then at one point, the guy now pulled the earphone, pulled one earphone. Like, I mean, even now, I'm even saying it's up, that you pull one earphone. That's someone that used to, you understand? Yeah. Pull one earphone. It's lacking bass. <laughs> <laughs> and in that moment, eh, I had too many things done on me. I, I, I can me? imagine. Bro, this man, in his own right, in his own way, influenced me to go into music. Because growing up as a child, now I mean as a child, I've always had vinyl in my house. I've always known my popsy as a rocker, regardless. You get me? Always throwing parties, always playing music, always doing it. Do you understand? And then as I got older, I started to steal those things into yeah. my room or my private space so, and make them so listen, my yeah. own. You get me? At one point, I even had two of his turntables. Why did my father have two turntables? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, he had two turntables and I would be playing music on this one and I would be doing like this scratching with no mixer, trying to... Trying to, yeah, say what you saw. And he had all those classic records, all of them, every single one you can think of, he yeah, had it. them. And when I was younger, I used to use a lot of them as frisbee. That frisbee thing all did that thing, did it too. Ah, so, I mean, yeah, dude, uh, dude actually kind of empowered me with the speech that he gave me after he listened to The man says stuff like, I'm a very educated man. I've known a lot of very educated men in my life. I've worked with a lot of educated men in my life. After listening to you speak, I don't think you need an education anymore. Mm, mm. I was just like, wow. I cry now. You understand? That kind of, I never expected. So, yeah. Yeah. I never expected um, him to support or even be proud. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, that, 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 took, that was actually, it's actually taking a toll on me right now. But that was, yeah, that was cool. That was dope. So, that from then on, like, I, and I went back to Yankee. Oh, actually, no. I went back to Vienna because I came from Vienna. I was living in Vienna at the time with my girlfriend because um, she was from Slovakia, but her mother agency, which is her top, her original agency, was in Vienna, Austria. So we had to go and clean her up because yeah. she had made, she had been blacklisted in New York. Okay. She was doing a lot of drugs, missing a lot of appointments, and she was a top, top model. She was booking like 30K euros, 40K euros, 50K euros, Damn. 60K euros, 90K euros for a two days, three day job, you understand? So she, she got a little carried away. That's when I met her. So I, I rehabbed her, I got her clean, did all that stuff. We now we even had to go to Vienna and stay there for a year. So this was during that period. So I now returned to Vienna from Nigeria, um, New Year's 2005. And then somewhere in the summer, I can't remember what, what month it was, I now went to Yankee uh, for my sister's wedding in Dallas. And that was the first time my popsy asked me, how's the music? Are you getting it? Yeah. It might be it something. Have, yeah, it might, like something it must have been, it must have, yeah, I can so, imagine the yeah. feeling. So, um, I now spoke with NATO again, and um, we now spoke with Obi. That was the first time I spoke to Obi Asika. And I was on the phone, I didn't really think nothing of that phone call, to be honest. I'm you like, well. Yeah. To be honest, I was just like, whatever, we'll see when we'll see. But then, when I was in, when I went back to Vienna, I was kind of like, man, look, this Vienna, man, I don't feel like this, my girlfriend had a son at the time, and I'd, already, I'd been raising him at that point. I'd been raising, I'd been like his dad for three years, going on four. 
and I was already looking at him like, I, I have to be able to provide for yeah. for real now. This one that I'm just doing mm, 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 off of savings, it don't make sense. So I decided to make the move. I convinced my shorty that, yo, look, we're going to go back to New York, we're going to get an apartment, set you guys up, and I'm going to go back to Nigeria. Do this for about like eight weeks, create a profile for myself from Nigeria, and I would uh, come, use, come back yeah. and use it over here. The first few weeks I was in Nigeria, <laughs> uh, my girl was losing her mind. Ah, uh, just, oh, you're cheating on me. You went to go and find <laughs> See how this works? Definitely. You went to go and find mm. your African oh, wow. queen. <laughs> no, African, 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 African queen. Two faced. Two faced, don't want to call Two faced, don't call So, you know, the influence. Bruh, that movie, um, what was the name of that movie? That the the one with Fat the Girls. The one with the money Fat, Fat Girls. Girls. Yo, it was big, no? And that song was big. So, it caused a lot of flack between her and I, but things were working for me out here like this. Because I met Obi Asika. The first day I met him, we spoke for about maybe like 25 minutes and he was just like overwhelmed with, I guess, my level of knowledge. knowledge and for and, yeah, and then yeah. our camaraderie, yeah. like our rapport. So it was like, yo, just come and see me tomorrow, come and see me tomorrow, come and see me tomorrow. I didn't know what the implication of come and see me tomorrow Man. was. But when I came to see him tomorrow, there was another group of guys there that were trying to sign to Storm Records then too. And then they told me that he made them an offer for one million that he wants to see. That was 2006. That was more hits. I was just like, yeah. but that's where I met the badge. You get me? So unfortunately for Obi, he brought these two entities, Ikechiko and the band, together. together. And once I saw my guy was low-key trying to find somewhere to smoke, I knew it wasn't cigar that he was trying to smoke. <laughs> 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 you guys, you, like, we're like, guys. Yo, what's good, G? What you trying, what you got there? <laughs> you know? He's like, oh, you, when I did do this one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Why do I feel like he sounded exactly like that? Because my nigga, you know? But anyway, like, the Jazzy frowned on it as usual. And, <laughs> you know, we were in the back smoking and GC, smoking and GC, and we just bonded. I left Obi Asika's house with them. Are you wow. getting me? And we never stopped being together. You know, it was ridiculous because to one to a certain degree, Don Jazzy started to vex like the two of them. I don't, don't die for the two of them now. Do you understand? Ikechuku. This your marijuana habit, you have to stop influencing the band with it. I said, ah. Now, so I miss the <laughs> guy. <laughs> <laughs> Who even spoke more? But anyway, but I was then, you know, that was a long time ago. Um, so, yeah, that's, I mean, look, that's, that's how I came into the whole storm situation. The plan initially was that, you know, Nito and I, you know, would do this joint venture with Storm Records and Usher Uzi in WFA, build WFA up, so, yeah. you know, do it just like a, you know, a Rockefeller, you know what Type, I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, Def Jam, Rockefeller, whatever. Whatever happened with Girlfriend? Whatever happened to with the Girlfriend? Girlfriend? Oh, so Nigeria destroyed that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because I... Like it goes everything. <laughs> bro, I, I think I must, I must have spent all my savings just flying back and forth to calm her down. And then the last time I flew back, because she lost it, she flipped out. Ah, no, she's not taking this one. This new one that she just heard. I'm like, heard from who? Who are you? Who are you hearing from? What are you well, hearing? You know, Sabi, anybody for you? So I got on a flight, got back to my house. My, she changed the locks. And she was not even in the country. So I now had to do this crazy, stupid thing. My building was a five five floor building, you know. No elevator. Please don't walk tell up. Me they call them walk ups, right? Yeah. I came outside. Don't tell me I'm about to think what you Yeah. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't in the back of the don't building. Don't tell me you did that. It was in front of the building. Right. You get me? So, like, next to the stoop of the building, you have, you could stand from the, the side of the stoop when you've climbed to the top, right next to the door, and you can grab the bottom of the fire escape and pull, pull it down. Yeah. And then I climbed up, and I'm on the fifth floor, right? So, it opens, it, it's, it's right on one window. But that window is permanently locked, locked, right? Unless you open it from the double latch yeah. on the inside. And I see my second window open at the top. Check it because it slides like. Yeah. So I just shimmy on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Finish now. 
all my shit gone. Wow. Bed sheets, everything gone, shoes gone, and I had, I, I had one hell of a shoe collection back there. All my clothes gone, video games gone, my my GameCube was gone. <laughs> my GameCube, you bro. Nintendo <laughs> bro. I'm a Nintendo nigga. <laughs> that was it. All the pictures on the fridge of us as a family, you know what I'm saying? Gone. The only thing that I was still, all my books on my bookshelf, gone. I was just like, wow. So I now walk back into the room and then I now notice more stuff. I'm like noticing stains on the mattress. You know, those type of stains, not pee stains, you know. But I'm like, ah. And I'll go to the side of the wall and I sit down and I just drop to the floor and I'm sitting down. Now I can see under the bed and I see uh, condom wrappers. I'm just like, ah. <laughs> Don't be <laughs> you know I mean? So yeah, that was, that was the end of that. But um, What year was this? That was 2006. That was 06. When was my name is Ikechuku? 06. So this had my name is Ikechuku had dropped by then? It had dropped, but it hadn't... It never blew. Yeah. yeah. It, had, it had pretty much just dropped. I now came back and shot the video. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So like, at that point in time, the only joints that you heard of Ikechuku on the radio were Fuji, um, Dari Fuji. Dari, Dari, yeah. Yeah, and then that... Um, Dare song that was um that never we never shot the video for that was Dare the Banj me Alaye Don Jazzy um, it was like Escalade remix that's what it was called um yeah those were the only two yeah yeah those were the only two and then my name is Ikechu so like after that whole Shmebang Smash Melo nonsense I came back to Nigeria with the intention of never going back to Yankee for the rest of the year. She like, what do I got yeah, like, yeah. I've always been this dude that my life revolves around my relationships. She get So if my relationship is not working, my life is not working. Uh, even till today. That's interesting. Yeah, if my relationship is not working, my life is not working. If I don't have a woman in my life, it's like, what's the point of hustling? Do you have one now? Yeah, kind of, sort of. Yeah, we're working on it. That's interesting. This no, I don't I, know if people I, I, know. I you just just, come and say. The thing you just <laughs> tear your shirt yeah. and rap. And, and guess what? And guess what? That's actually and people always say to me, ah, this guy, you never tired to this single. You know one date, you know I say, oh my, who they date past me? Let me they try the hardest now. But the the impression that a lot of people have yeah, yeah. of me is like a complete opposite. It, it is, me. man. So sometimes I'll deal with situations where a girl would meet me and she would just be like, mm, I beg, I beg, I beg. This one that they, they say in between me. I'm like, hmm? that I <laughs> yes, I look at you now, you resemble them. I'm like, story don't change. <laughs> so not that you even heard that I'm You just look someone. like. You're just assuming. Yeah. That. Okay, there was a time because of there was a t time when they said he came to fourteen in the club. Yeah, there was the it's part it, of. It's you get one time when they say you. <laughs> okay, there were two club fights. Bro, there were more than. There, there were more than two. Were, it I'm became like no. There were. I think there were. There were three. That made the news. Okay. That made the news. Well, yeah. the news. What was yeah. the first one? The first one was Bacchus. Um, I kind of like broke one of the bouncers. I kind of like opened his head up. Why though? Yo, bro, listen. Eh? You see how you... Have you always been this big? No. Okay. So when you were smaller, right? Then people used to pick on you. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I've, I've always been that guy where it's like, you pick on me, I'm going to show you. You know what I'm saying? I've been going through that since I was a yeah, little yeah, kid. Yeah, so zero tolerance yeah. for bullies. Zero, so zero tolerance for any kind of oppression, period. You get me? So, coming back to Niger, that era, we were still in baggy clothes era. And I was still that skinny dude. So, on top of that, now these guys, they don't get, they don't get small G say, oh, this one now uh, up and coming. You understand? So, yeah. walking up to the doors, they'll just be like, Kaita. Kaita, kaita. But this one was Bacchus, and that time Bacchus, you could was, still yeah. pay to enter so the club. So I don't know, okay, you know what? Niggas won't be disrespectful like that. Yeah, you see, they give the Yankee accent. Give the, you, know, you know that I like, just switched. <laughs> I don't enter that mood. I don't know, niggas won't be disrespectful like that shit, man. Fuck that shit. We're going to pay, we're going to get in this shit, and then we gonna, that's what's up. We're going to show these motherfuckers ain't shit. Fuck that. And I lived right around the corner with Obi Asika at the time. See, yeah. He lives on Sumbo Jibo. That's right off our lower road. Are you getting me? Yeah. And that's Bacchus right there. So now, I'm not like, I'm going to pay to get in. And you can't pay. 
I'm like, oh, God, they speak for them for you. Oh, I'm learning for you. Fuck you talking about campaign shit. Fuck, I'm paying to get the nigga to touch me. I was like, yo, what the fuck are you, who are you touching? I, yo, you don't touch niggas like that. You just don't. I, this, this culture in Nigeria is fucked up because. Yeah, that they touch with this excuse and all that shit. A lot of bouncers will be dead. So you get it. Look, we don't even allow to carry firearms out here. For real. You're like, why are you touch? Why are you disrespecting me? It's the same thing as stepping on my brand new white Air Force Ones. You stepped on my shit? Fight. <laughs> you know what I'm Fight. So yeah, I was like, the guy gave me the second one, boom. I was like, ah. As I, as I was falling back, the no parking, you know those metal no yeah, parking? Yeah, damn. As I felt it, and I was like, <laughs> so the guy now wanted to fall forward on me, and I'll give him. Sure you can. <laughs> and that was the end of it, really. No, because after that, it was just melee. Okay, so, okay, so melee, you melee. didn't fight the bouncer. You beat, it, it was, was a beat down. The second Bacchus one I fight. The second time I actually had an like, altercation at Bacchus with the bouncer. Okay. It was fight. It was fight. Did you win? Bro, bouncers cannot fight. They're just big for Yeah, you throw that. Watch a bouncer throw blue now. <laughs> Do you know how many blows I've entered? <laughs> Show me, what's a perfect punch? Show me. Huh? Oh, damn, my daddy's good. Do that again. <laughs> no, do that again. too fast. Do that again. Do that again. From wherever it is, it's supposed to just move straight. Back. So you didn't learn, like, from all from these different, like, young. yeah. Yeah, like, before I left back to Yankee, my parents enrolled me in martial arts class at the Great Club. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, Ishinra, Shotokan, Karate, yeah. Judo, Taekwondo. After a few years, they kicked me out for being too rough, too rough, you know. Uh -uh. When, when I now go back to Yankee. <laughs> Oh, no. We don't condone violence, kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, but my own was not, my own was not that I was that rambunctious. Okay, I was rambunctious a little bit, but I wasn't that violent kid. Yeah. I was just the one that if you, eh, if you when we're playing me. on the side, you want to, right? I want to do it for real, for yeah. real. Let's do it for real, for real. I'm like, no, come. I was like, yeah. So after, I, I think I, I think it. that one time. Okay. What was the third fight? That made me. Okay. The third one that made noise. But that's the band one now. Okay, yeah, hey, I knew there was one that the band was in the story. Okay, then you're, then you're, okay, so you're not so talking enough. about fights in general. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you meant I thought you meant like no now. I thought you meant chill now. Dude. <laughs> I thought you meant um the bouncer situations now. The band and I never actually really fought. For real. Like we never really never really Double physically blows, yeah. fought. Yeah. Um <laughs> it was like an argument or maybe as, you know, back then it was city people and yeah, those, um, we never get those social stuff. media type. Yeah. Yeah. They would just cook one story, put everybody read. Okay. Yeah, I guess cool now. Uh -huh. Yeah. Do you want me to call him? I can ask him. <laughs> <Come on, baby. laughs> <laughs> that the last the last story that made the news that really bothered the hell out of me, and it, it stuck for a very long time. It was hard to watch that shit. It was right after the mamas at Echo Hotel. We had gone to this club rehab. Um, my girl That's was with me at the time. Um, a fr another friend of mine was me yeah, at the time, and my brother Uzi was with me. And rehab was my friend's club, you know. Um, and uh, I knew all the bouncers, the head bouncers, everyone. But this one particular bouncer was feeling new guy. I don't know what the fuck he was feeling like, but he was feeling something. Yeah. You know? And you know how they have those barricades that you, they're kind of like like this, so you have to walk through them before you get to the front. So they yeah. put one bounce at the beginning of the barricade and then there's one at the gate. So at the tip of the whole barricade, I'm trying to and the guy just gives me boom on my chest too. Mm. I mean I'm already in a good mood because, you know, last minute at the mamas, they were having some kind of technical was difficulties. Oh nine twenty ten. Twenty ten, now yeah. They were having like have those issues. issues or whatever backstage and the next thing they were just like, yo, you can't you can go see for us. Just help us ginger the crowd. And I was like, you motherfuckers trying to get me for cheap. I'm like, you ain't pay no money. He's like, my family. I got on stage. Yeah, it was dope. It was fun. You did you know? your thing, yeah. And then we now left and we're going for the after party. We're going to rehab. I park on the curb, walk across. I remember it seemed like yesterday. My brother took half a bottle of Henny that was in the car, in his hand, like just on reflex, so you get. And um, he was, uh, 
he was behind me, everybody was behind me, right? Because I'm leading the charge. And as I'm, I'm walking, 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 I'm just expecting, because I always walk into it. I'm not really expect this guy just gave me bah on my chest. I was like, ah. And it was a very disrespectful yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm with my girl. So I'm not quick to start Sorry, to do, yeah. yeah. <coughs> and the guy now only gives me the bad air. I'm like, ah, how far? I bet, I bet she back, she back, she back, she back, she back, she back. So that was how I just grabbed the guy's hand and twisted it down. Oh, I was like, oh, 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 no, 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 they palm me for chest. So something to worry you. I mean, you don't, you know, a look face. I think that might be one of the only times my whole that career that said I've that ever thing. said, you know, they look face. You understand? Austin, the chief bouncer at the main gate, now shouted. I don't even remember the guy's name. Wait, what was that? Come on. You know, they look face. You see who they talk to. Come on there, Joe. Okay, so the guy now reluctantly Give comes him. out of the way. So at that point, me, I don't even go through. I'm like, uh, Dio, enter. Sarah, enter. Rosie, enter. So I'm now walking behind Rosie. Now the guy reach over me from behind, grab ah. Rosie's shoulder, and bah! You know if you enter with that bottle, that bottle is my own. Ah. Rosie just came from me. <laughs> so you know, see, <laughs> Uzi at that point was like, you know, saying so don't trim. Yeah, him. yeah. Oh, big at yeah, yeah, at, that one was point, at one point, Uzi, you know, Uzi is not that tall. Yeah, he's not tall. At that point, Uzi was, was like huge, 290 man. pounds. That was huge. Full blown, full back for football, if you want. Do you understand? Uzi just did like this. Now the guy had fly first. Then the guy now tried to jump again from behind me. And me, I'm there now. So me, I just held both sides of the barricade like this. The guy couldn't move. Couldn't move. Now he ain't grab my own shoulder. As he grabbed my own shoulder. <laughs> and, and this 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 whole kick that that removed two of his teeth, right? A lot of that time social media did. Yeah, it has no Plenty of people don't pull camera out to take picture. The picture that was in the paper was you see my face, you see my face like this, and the guy's the back of the guy's head, and you see my leg in the air. That's all you see in people. And for you for like maybe four years trying to find all the SEOs, pushing that thing and pulling them down, trying to pull them down. Actually, it blacklisted me for a lot, for a long time. Yeah. For a long time. Because people were just like, this guy is just too violent. It's just, yeah, every time, fight, 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 fight. They won't understand that when fight is about to break, it's me that's always saying, don't fight, don't fight, don't fight, don't fight, stop, now. It's not, it's not necessary. But my own, they always, end up pushing me yeah. past my, you know, my limits. And even when I've said, Woosa. Do you understand? So you so, don't start fights, no, you just finish them. I'm, nah, I'm not, I'm not a starter. So it's taking it back, good. Just. No, I want to ask about the SARS thing recently. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, Today, again, them coming at you, because again, I think they're fronting that they did not know you. So I'm wondering whether this whole thing about you being such a fighter even came up. Bro, it came up. Bro. Like when they fronted, when they, when I finally did the whole ATM thing and the guy was now like, ah, this guy, you stop on ah. When you introduce us to the Jazzy? Mm, I'm like, I'm down, man. I'm down. See, you're kind of like, the like, nigga. You know what you're going to say? you won't fight me now. You won't fight me now. Fight now. You know, fights before when gone day of his fights now. God damn it. So just well, let look, go. Look, look, even, see, I say this thing all the time. Right? If you like, uh, go back in time and let Bruce Lee train you better than himself. Yeah? Then go and bulk up small and then come again. Let Jet Li and Jackie Chan mm. train you. Mm. There's a situation where you will find yourself and where you will be outnumbered and overwhelmed. That no matter how much fighting you have inside you, it's not going to help. So it's so your best go. interest. What's your, your, what's, your, what's your advice to the average young man that come in, in contact with SARS? Every, what's your advice to someone ah, who has man, a SARS encounter? I wish you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I really wish you don't. I wish we could do some kind of revamping of the Nigerian police force, like a, a complete overhaul, you know. But... Um, to advise the youth, man, I was like, man, know your rights, but at the same time, pay attention to your environment and 
the emotional state of, of, the, the, person, of yeah. the SARS individuals you're dealing with. And all you have to do is look in their eyes and you can tell. You know, because a lot of these guys, uh, they are very frustrated. A lot of them, they are very frustrated to the point where they allow themselves go against their original morals. So you get, because at some point, these guys were good guys. Yeah, they wanted you know? to, okay, right, okay. But they felt abandoned to a certain degree by their own people and by us. And then they now start seeing young guys doing Boy, better yeah. than life. Them, yeah. you know? And they start to feel some kind of animosity and resentment like it, it just builds into a into a, a demon that is what we have yeah. today so i mean but then again that still doesn't justify what they do what they do and how they operate so you got so i mean my advice to them that, that would be my advice man take it easy but well, if you can record record and yeah. if you survive jesus name. But you're yeah. not allowed to, but you don't have a right. Do they, or do you have a right to? Well, I, record I mean, you record now, yeah. yeah. The other day I was in Uber, like a couple of days ago, I was in Uber at night, heading home. And if you know Lucky Phase 1, at the end of Admiralty, where Freedom Way. Yeah, it links to, yeah. They are there all the time, man. The guy, when he looked into the car and saw my face, he went from this to, <laughs> come down, come down, come down, we want to search. So I now the window down, I said, sorry. Search for, and I was, I was trying to be very, yeah. I was like, search for what? He's like, I say stop and search. And then two cars drive right behind. I said, but those two cars, I was like, I said, I'm one man. I said, but you're six, you're like six, you know? He's like, my guy, I said, calm down for stop and search. I was like, do I resemble anyone? Like, I'm trying to get him in the conversation. Yeah. I'm like, do I resemble anyone that you're looking for? He's like, how do you know what I'm looking for? I said, I don't. That's why I just asked you. He said, my get my friend, calm down. I said, stop and search. He said, no problem. So I guess I'm getting stopped and searched right now <laughs> by the officer, as you can see, and his cohorts. We're in lucky phase one. Yeah. You say you did record? I said, no, I know they record. This one, I live, live TV, Instagram, live. Instagram, they record, I'm sure. He said, ah. Open the door. Can't put through and shit. Said, you saw my pouch. He said, What's inside there? I said, uh, Charger, bank card, money. He said, Let me see, let me see. He opened it. He said, uh -huh. What's inside your pocket? I said, Feel free. He said, Stop and search now. Search. Still recording? Yes, now. The guy said, Search, 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 search. And uh, you can go. I was like, Are you sure? He's like, Yeah. I said, okay, Thank you. The guy walked away immediately because he saw me recording. Yeah, you sure. know, and these ones are not SARS. They, they are uh, colo mentality. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't enter complete. Yeah, so. yeah I, I I think so. But the SARS one, but you also yes, no. this no. Okay, no, no. Did you didn't record that one. Do you know no, how these guys yeah. operate? So I said, the the SARS guy. When I wound something. the window down, the guy said, "I say, come down." I know they talked, come down. And he has already Those stopped. He's already gotten it? the driver. Uh, they've already gotten the driver out of the car. As I oh. open my door, as my hand, even though he just takes my phone from my hand, as I say, ah, my <laughs> one blow. <laughs> the way it was like film. But let's not get distracted because let's leave that. So sound. acting, because new music. Music and acting too. What about music and acting? Are you into are you giving us new music or are you sticking to the acting? Okay. I have an issue with that question. Um, a lot of times I get interviewed ever since the whole acting... King of Boys. Ever since the whole... Wedding no, Party. Sorry, um, yeah, wedding, wedding Party. party yeah. Wedding Party. Well, I mean, even before that, because my first film was The Wages with Walt Banger. Yeah. yeah. And um, so my issue is this, like, with this question. People always kind of assume that you have to quit one to do the next mm -hmm. or to do the other. And the representations that have come before me globally have never had to deal with that yeah. type of, you know. You have to pick one. So yeah, I'm like, ain't nobody tell Will Smith or Ice T or Ice Cube. Ice Cube. Or <laughs> I never BMX thought that because or, the kid doing movies, he quit acting. Quit he quit music, music rather. Yeah. Nah, but I, I will say this. Yes, it's it's quite obvious that 
from my first, my debut in film, my music has kind of like taken a back seat. Back seat. Yeah. And it wasn't just because there was this new development that was happening. It was getting expedited. The, the success was getting expedited real quick. But it was also because I had gone through a period where I had, I had felt like my music investments weren't being reaped, you know? So that period from um, Zella, Uzi, Peter Clark, yeah. you get me? I was like, I was pouring like my personal funds into and borrowing from certain people, you know, and just trying to make it float and work. And there were too many Things at the same time. Hurdles and this and that. It was just spoiling everything. And, it just, you know, I was just like, man, look, no focus on this one. We don't really need uh, money from my pocket. Oh, the hours really good. We'll see the record. We'll see the release. But... And that's what I've done. If you think about it, um, okay, last album was 2010. Nine years ago. Last big single was Bulioto. Mm, yeah? Was Bulioto bigger than Balabala? Bala? Uh, so maybe that's what I like. Yeah, maybe yeah. Yeah. almost on the same yeah. level. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, uh, Bilotto was 2011. Um, I also released Love Me Tonight and Born Alone, that Die Alone. But I guess I was going through that heavy um, blacklisting period. Yeah, Stone blacklisted me for a bit. Oh, so that kind of like hurt me, it hurt my pockets and my bookings and my. My personal life, I heard out. Are you cool, Stomlo? To a certain degree. Okay. You know, OB? Yeah. I mean, to a certain degree, yes. Um, I will always love OB like a big brother. You know, I learned a lot from him. And um, I'm sure he learned a lot from me, too. OB, I see, I see, I'm That was 2006, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> the same movie I that I had to end up walking away from you know but um I still got mad love for him and um I don't got mad love for the things that transpired so are you making money off your records from Storm and from Moses no I've never made any money off of my Storm or Mo hits let me wave <laughs> <laughs> I've never made any money off of my Storm or Mo hits Actually, I've made money off of my Mo Hits collaborations, but that's mostly because of like my performances and that those songs popping up on my third album, which has absolutely nothing yeah. to do with Stone Records, okay. right? But Son of the Soil and Life and Times of Kills, I haven't made a dollar. Wow. Yeah, I haven't made a dollar. And we, we just had this conversation not too long ago, so let's just leave it at that. You know, so. <laughs> that's crazy. Um, yeah, but I mean, it, it is what it is. I'm, I, I'm in the, process in the process of trying to rectify okay. that. But okay. um, at the end of the day, you know, you live and you learn. And um, only if social media was alive and Back bubbling then. in 2006, yeah. we'd be talking about, we'd be having a different conversation. But yeah, um, where was I before we got into the Storm Records? Just Black Black music. Yes, process. thank you very much. So to answer the question, I have not quit one for the other. Okay. As we sit right now and speak, I'm sitting on two EPs, an album and a collab album. You know what I'm saying? I have two EPs, one called Soft, one called Hard. So the Soft is obviously for the ladies, the Hard is for my hardcore fans. Then I have an album, which encompasses all that. And then I have a collab album that I did with Ice Prince. Mm -hmm. right. Actually, I have two collab albums, but the one that is more serious is the one that is with Ice Prince because we finished it, we've wrapped it up, and now we're just looking platforms to put it out. Uh, keeps crying, I suppose. What's it called? Icy oh, Kills. Uh, As in icicles? Mm -hmm. Icy Kills. <laughs> oh, Ice I dig it. Yeah. And, um, but then before I even started recording with Ice, I started an album, a collab album with Jesse Jags. Hey! That's not good there. Yeah, well, you know, Whew. Jesse has that album. I yeah. Have, I, have, I have like maybe like two of the songs out of like 13 that were recorded. You know, and he has all that stuff on his system. So, so what's the problem now? Should we sign a petition for him to drop it? <laughs> nah, Jono, 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 Jesse. <laughs> you know, ask Jesse. 
But I got mad love for Jesse. Don't get it twisted. Everybody in this building. I love Jesse with every every fiber of my being, man. I understand him, okay. which makes me love him even more. Because not a lot of so people do, I see. I have no ill will or regrets that we actually even went through that process recording that stuff. At one point, I believe he, he thought he had lost all the data. Yeah. But then he found it. But, I mean, obviously, he too has his own projects that he's trying to do. I haven't heard Jesse for a minute. We haven't heard a body of work from Jesse for, yeah. for a minute. He has all his own demons that he's dealing with, Chalk City, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, so I can't sit here in my own truth and expect him to step out of his own truth to handle my own truth just because we have a collab situation. You get yeah. me? Yeah. So, yeah. Respect. But um, those, are, those are joints that have been done, you know, and they're just sitting. They're just sitting. And for a while, I'm conf I will confess, for a while, say end of 2014, 2015, and 2016, I was going through this period of should I release or should I not release? Should I release or should I not release? Or more the kind bar where you go need to release these joints back to back or you know, back to back or you must do back to back. If you don't do back to back, you waste your time. Ah man, that was like 33 million. And then on top down one, ah, so that's 9 million. Then another 3K, 3 million. Ah, promo marketing, then payola on top of everything. Ah. It's a lot, man. You know, if I put all that money together and I to shoot film, so I shot a film. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. I shot a film. I even had to take, I got investment for the film. Shout out to Baresi, you know. I got investment for the film. And we even had to get some more money for the film. So, you know, at the end of the day, it was another learning curve in my, a learning curve in my life. And um, I was just like, yo, you know what? This music, man, we're going to try. We're going to try. I came back 2015 and I released... No, 2014 Christmas, that's when I now went to Afrif because of the Wages film. And then I now released um, Carry Me featuring Ice Prince. I shot the video, immediately released it. The plan was to, and then I, I had um, Ololo with Olamide, and the plan was to shoot that video, but then we ended up, we had some kind of um, scheduling issues, and then he ended up, not, he ended up not yeah. showing up for the video. So kind of like just ended up shooting the video, like because we were on set waiting. Yeah. So we just ended up, we wrapped, and I put the video out like that. And at the point, at that time, Olamide and I had two songs, you know? So I was just like, man, this nigga's big right now, you know? So these collabs make mad sense, you know? But I, I, I got in my emotions. I, I got in my emotions on that one. And I was just like, man, this nigga, this nigga took the piss, yo. He just, he just did it for a uh, while. He just did me like donkey. Okay, now I just released a second single out like that. I didn't, even, I didn't even announce that I released it. I just put it out on a platform. I don't even remember. I meant maybe SoundCloud. So you get, yeah, I was, I was so upset, you know, where I should have just been chilled. Because, like, I mean, Olamide is a wonderful guy, to be honest. He's a cool guy. I don't know what was happening at that point in time, but things just happened. But anyway, so, and I left Nigeria again. I went to NYFA, took some classes, da 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 da, da and I came back again towards the end of 2015. Um, and then we shot the wedding party. Yes. And then I, I submitted three songs to Ebony Light Moabudu for the wedding party. And I was planning on releasing them so that they could do the double promo yeah, song, yeah, song and movie. movie. Ended up not taking the songs for the film. So I was just like, ah, okay. Forget, forget, 2016, Joe, 2016, we'll release music, we'll release music, 2016, 2016. Okay. What is 10 million? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you know, so I was like, man, the movies are doing all right, you know, I got a couple of series that I'm into now, you know, man, let's, let's focus on this film stuff, you know, plus there's some personal issues that I was trying to take care of too at the time, so my relationship, like I told you, when I'm in a relationship and it's not working, my life is not working, and I was in a relationship at that point that was not working, oh my God, it was not working, this was the first, you gotta understand, this was the first time I was actually really allowing myself be in a relationship after my engagement has scattered. Now, my engagement has scattered in 2012, 2013. 
That's why I actually left the country. 2012, I vamoosed. When the thing baffled, I vamoosed. I left. I came back in September. I started doing some shows. And then word was coming that ah, she wants to make up. She wants to make up. I said, okay, gave it a shot. I told her, yeah, me too. I want to make up. Oh, yeah, let's make up. Then uh, G started coming from left and right. Omo, no go near that baby. Ah, see you, see you, see you. Ah, 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 ah. Exit. Exit! Exit. Right. <laughs> Ran from the country again. And then, um, <laughs> it's like a movie. Yeah, I'm, I'm writing my book anyway. Um, so, releasing music at that point was just not paying me anything. So, I, you know, and dating was definitely not on my mind. I was like, I'll see some girls once in a while, maybe have something here or there, but nothing real, real. I always had questions. I was, every babe was a ho. Every babe it it up, it agenda. Every babe, you're either trying to use me to reach somewhere, or you want to call up my dough, the remaining dough that I have. In fact, I'm going to blow this dough, so I don't even have any dough. So that you can leave me alone. Leave me alone. Ah, I'm serious. So. And then um, I went through a deep, deep depression period, yo. And I, I kind of like crawled myself back out of it when I was outside the country. And then I now met this shorty. We started talking. She was Igbo like me, but she was born in America like me, and she was raised in America. So me, I was thinking, yeah, you know, this could be, and you know, it wasn't. <laughs> so no, I still, I still like Shorty. Like to today, she's a good, you know, she, she's a cool person, but she's just not for me. You know what I mean? And um, it dragged for a period because what ended up happening was when that didn't work out. I said to myself, no more Niger babes, I beg. Don't tell from Niger babes. I never had this problem before. Ah, what's this? What's, what, 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 what's all this nonsense? There's a joke now that brother boy left Niger and well, and now he's winning. <laughs> he's nominated for a Grammy. <laughs> <laughs> but you said there's a relationship now. Is it, is it? Relationship? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the, when so I said that, it's like I just didn't want to be on camera and deny this person. You get what I'm saying? And it's fresh. Like when I say fresh, I mean the it's one you're in right now. Right now, in Niger Baby is where I'm going. Yeah. Okay. You got me, but it's 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 fresh, totally fresh, and she has no kind of tentacle or attachment to the entertainment it's world. Toxic industry. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So that's actually the only reason why I actually gave it a shot, and I'm giving it a shot. You know, so and so far, so far, so far, so good. You know, it's been like. A few weeks, so <laughs> no, no, so, no, 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 no. We, we've been speaking for about like you know four weeks and a couple of weeks. We've been seeing hip -hop head. after that, no, nah, not really. Okay, so it's really okay. just yeah, she's a lawyer, she works, you know, she's you know, she might know a few of my songs from the past, but that's, that's pretty that, much it. That's how I like it. That's okay. how I like it, and I don't want my babe to be a fan of me. Before, before a fan of you, we get it. Yeah, be a fan of what I do later, but be a fan of you in person. You know. Yeah, and and I see that in her, so I'm just like, I, this one doesn't look like an act. So, but let's be moving cautiously. Real, real. Last question yeah. before we can wrap up. So, what was that transition from like um, Storm Records to movies? How, why did you make that decision? That's another. Um, misconstrued piece of information um yes that was actually supposed to happen because you could tell from the even from the like artwork the collab, yeah, all those had yeah yeah wfa and, and yeah, yeah. One, because it was supposed to be a collab a joint venture type situation but that never ended up happening but people just assumed it did because they always saw me because and Nato it was kind of like initially a with mohits but then after i left storm they saw me with mohits all the time and part of the reason, besides them being my brothers, was also because Sunday Are now kind of took over interim bookings for me instead of Tola Odunsi, who was still Storm Records at the time. But then that actually didn't really work out for me because Sunday kind of figured it out that, hmm, this is get you good bookings with some people, they always say, ah, I wanna be a sick out, no few do, no few. Because that was the first time I actually yeah. found out that I was blacklisted. But I booked the band. They don't mind the Ketchuku now, so okay. But that kind of played a, that kind of like dulled me out because it seemed like ah, he's only doing shows when he is with 
the bank. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people assume that ah, he's part of more hits now, 100. percent You know, a lot of people are like ah, if they have the bands, that means they have. Ikechuku. So what's the point of booking Ikechuku when he performs with the band? We've gotten what we want from him. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it was kind of like it was um it was kind of like a catch 22 for me. I was between a, like a rock and a hard place for a few years, but then I had to pick myself up out of that, yo. Know? And Bilioto was kind of like. Oh, okay. Yeah. Low key message there. Yeah, Bilioto was my real, like, yo, it was actually my message to myself. You know, like, get off your damn ass. Bilioto, one, stand up, get up, go and make this thing happen. Stop dulling and thinking it's going to happen again for you. And that's why, if you notice, I've had high, right? yeah. another high. And then it just kind of, it, it didn't drop all the way. It kind of just came here and it was doing like this until maybe like 2013, 2014, right? Just, this film, let's do the film. But it was really based, like people don't understand that my, like I've never really spoken about that relationship like publicly before that podcast thing, right? But it had a huge effect, like a huge negative effect on my entire life. And it took a while for me to actually come up out of that. It took a long time, a very long time. Oh, wow. yeah. So. Oh, you are coming a lot. Did the, the more hits when they split? Did they, how, did they affect you? How would it you not know, affect me when yeah. a lot of people were kind of making it seem like it was my fault? <laughs> so I was like, how is it my fault? How did your name enter? Uh uh. Ikechuku is always with the band. Don Jazzy doesn't like Ikechuku okay, with uh, the band all the time. Everybody will just be making up their own stories yeah. and throwing it inside. Meanwhile, I was holding the two of them saying, Guys, not saying. Don't do this. <laughs> stop! Stop! <laughs> no! Now I go to this one's room like, Jazzy, beg now. What do you do now? No, don't do that. This one. Now. I'm beg now. Come on now. And I'm older than Jazzy. <laughs> yeah, and I go to Divine. Divine like, this guy. Can you see it? Jay. Hit it! <laughs> How far now? Listen, did you do that? Man, you know, <laughs> I love them two niggas, man. I swear to God. Because like when you, when you sit back and look back now, man, I'm, did you talk to Dr. Sid about this? Yeah, yeah we talked. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sid talked about his whole part of it. How they also tried to blame him because of that. Yeah, I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I asked you. Did you talk to Dr. Sid about it? Ah, man. Ah, man. And then another person you should talk to is one day. Hey, Bro. God. See, a lot of people, see, to me, eh, there's really no difference between love and hate. It's actually the same exact feeling. Just one is negative and one is more positive. But they burn with the same energy. They're the exact same thing. One is because the other is not working. Think about it, yo. Why do you hate somebody when they've done something to you? It's because you loved yeah. them to a certain degree and they fucked you over. So now you have that. I mean, it might not be hate, you know, but you resentment just resentment will come or something, something. Yeah. So... It's a thin line between those two things. It's a thin line <laughs> between love and hate. Remember that song? Yeah. Who's that? Ah, uh, shit, who sang that song? It was, it was, it was like Aretha or one of them from back then. So yeah. speaking of songs, when you first heard this? Ah. Like, I think you got, this is my favorite Don Jazzy, so I think you got like the favorite, I don't know. What What's that, Let play? You, I, Oh, she. Till yes. today. Sorry, do you know? This song, Till Today. Till Today. So, like, so what was so that? I have a theory like? about this song. I don't know what movie, whether it was the first Triple X, but I feel like watching one old movie, I feel like I've heard something somewhere that was probably what Don Jazzy heard. Something random. And maybe from there, it just inspired him and he made this beat. We Is were... there, do you know the origin of this of the instrumental? Ah, I don't go know the origin. Nah, Don Jazzy could come now. Well, and then, do you know what it was that hit him? There was one. He was trying to do. He was trying to make a beat for me. He was trying to make a beat. For, well, no, no, no. Sorry. Okay. I don't know what inspired this beat because he was trying to make a beat for me, and then he had this beat, and I think he had cooked this one with the band in mind. I think that's what he says. Like, but then. It was just like, you got tired of cooking and started playing and then played this one. And I was like, I oh, know this one, I can work with this one. <laughs> and, like, and I think maybe the band said he didn't like it or something like that or something. I was like, all right, cool. This song, in its initial stage, was Ikechuku 
featuring Don Jazzy. Mm. Mm. That was the song. And then once we finished and the band heard, heard it, I said, eh? No, without me. <laughs> say you are lying. <laughs> You know what they see. Uh, what you, have they have good, you have such a good debate. You're playing some sort of <laughs> critical. Uh, yeah. Another one. So, yeah. That was actually even heavier. That was a heavy. Yeah, but you see, the thing about critical, right, is I didn't like performing critical because the rap never allowed me rap. Hey, you guys, I mean, there's no one other than you. Mm. You're raising the temperature when you're walking into the room. Oh, <laughs> I'm just like, it had to a lot of debunch in it. Yeah, it was, mo it felt like more of a debunch yeah, featuring yeah. the K than yeah. the Chuku featuring the band. You know what I'm saying? Hook. As, as opposed to now is the time, which everyone says is the Chuku featuring the band, uh, Don Jazzy, even though Don Jazzy is, you know, mostly the hook. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, ah, man, that now is the time, man. Which one do you think is bigger, critical or now is the time? Critical. critical. That's how you feel. That's how you feel. Producer, how do you feel? Critical. Um, <laughs> if you see it, when critical comes on, eh? when critical comes on, hey! When now is the time comes? Hey! <laughs> I mean, I'm, bro, I'm talking everybody. Yo. Like, I'm still weak. I'm still weak <laughs> at the power of that song. But, like, going back to this one well. that I'm speaking of. Till today, it's like any booking I get, they want me to perform to find out well. It's like, the, you keep talking about new song, new song, new song. The only way people will even want me to perform any of those new songs, and the new songs are from nine years ago to now, right? Those will yeah. work because they, a lot of people haven't heard some mm. of these jams. But they don't want to hear that. They want to hear, my name is Iketchuku. Sometimes they want to hear should be the do But it's... Uh, wind up well, well. sometimes they even ask me to perform Kini Big Deal that is not even my <laughs> song. Do you understand? Uh, and I never have. Uh, the critical and now is the time. Do you understand? So to me, sometimes it feels like, damn, bro. So these people only like your Mohit collaborations. They don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't know any better. No, no, no. They do know better, but at the end of the day, the decision you're like you can know better but it doesn't necessarily mean that your last decision is going to be better you know so all right it is. That's music what is it coming is. out in 2020 though i'll say that okay. so we're looking forward to collaboration albums film book and movies. the jags album god jags. Talk to jesse jags about that. those prayer for the gold talk to jesse about that because i have no control over it all i have control over is the ice prince one. Is the ice one i don't even have full control over that Oh, by the way, you might not know this, but Ice Prince just got signed to 300 in America. Real? Yeah. So that one, they just gave him, like, when we were in Yankee, I went to see him, and he was going over his schedule with me. I was just like, I went, I went to see him to discuss shooting two videos. And my eye was like, you know what? It was a long taxi ride. I said, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to him, and I'm going to be like, yo, out of all the songs, give me your top two. If I go to shoot videos for them now, I want your top two. That's how I started combo. He was like, Kills, you're killing me. I'm like, yo, just give me, okay, give me one. He's like, yeah, but you can't just shoot one. I was like, exactly, so give me two. And he's like, well, I would say this one. I was like, all right, cool. So I just got signed, 300 Kevin Lyles. And I was like, nah, stop playing. He showed me the contract. I was like, oh, my nigga. I felt like I got signed. <laughs> but at the same time, I just knew, ah, this one is scheduled for the next three, six months. And he just came back. I was just at his house the other day. And... Again, we're talking about, before I can even think about, we're already talking about what he's doing and what he's doing. So, yeah, I don't know, man. That okay. Ice Prince, the Get Your Cool album. It's anything can't come out without, uh, We've already released two singles, though. They're on your platform, just uh, Apple Music. Just hot All girls right. are follow me. Get me. Go get it. All right. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, it's kind of an anti-climax right now. And it's a wrap. Telling us the truth. Yeah, because we keep going one stop. <laughs> so, thank you for coming. I appreciate you having me, man.